Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make these really pretty, cute fabric cubes. So let's take a look at them. This particular cube is small enough to hold my fat quarter fabrics, which I desperately needed something to put my fat quarters in. This one is a little bit larger and I made it to hold my patterns. And then this one here, I also desperately needed to, to store my fabric, or excuse me, my cotton batting pieces. I had so many and they were just all over the place and this helped me to contain them. Now when you make these fabric cubes, you can make them any size you want. You just need to measure the item and cut your squares out accordingly to the size. So let me push these aside and I'm going to go over what supplies you need for these. So here we go. Now the size is going to vary because you're going to cut things out to fit the item you want or items you want to store in it. Once you determine the size, you're going to need five squares for the outside of the fabric cube. And then for your lining, you're going to need another five squares. You can make the uh, use the same fabric as the outside if you want to or use two different fabrics. And then you're going to need five squares of iron-on heavy interfacing. I really want to stress that because I get people all the time, what kind of interfacing? Heavy. Use very heavy interfacing. And then your binding, when you cut it out, you want a two inch wide strip. And the length will vary depending on the size of the cube that you're making. When you stitch the binding on, you want to uh, use one quarter inch seam. But when you're stitching your squares together, you're going to use three eighths inch seam. Okay, so after you've got your, well actually let me go over how to measure. So here's one of my patterns. Alrighty, so I'm going to measure the width. So one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. I'm going to add an additional inch because I'm going to be having seam allowance. So I'm going to cut seven and a half inch squares. Alright, so you always want to add some for seam allowance. So cut your squares out. So here's one of mine. This is the front side of my fabric. But on the back is where you want to put your heavy iron-on interfacing. Remember, heavy, because you want something that's going to make your cube stiff. So I've already got some fused on. So here's the front. You're going to put it on the back side. The shiny part is the side you want to face down on your fabric. The shiny stuff is the glue. So you want to make sure that's the side you put it down on. Then you want to follow the instructions that come with the package of your heavy iron-on interfacing. It'll probably tell you to use a damp cloth to put over it, heavy um, hot iron with steam, and you're going to hold it down on there for an, a certain number of seconds, probably going to be on an average of 10 seconds. So read those instructions and follow what they tell you to do to fuse it on. Now, after you've gotten your interfacing on your squares, on four of the squares, remember just four, you don't need to do it on all five, on four squares you want to mark three-eighths from this edge, three-eighths from this edge. So here's my three-eighths inch mark here and here and I'm going to line it up on the edge and then with a pencil you're going to put a little dot there and do it on the other side. So you only need to do it on two corners. So do that again on four of your squares. Okay, so now you want to take all of your squares and you're going to stitch them together using three-eighths of an inch seam from the raw edge in. So you're going to start up here and stitch all the way down to the dot. So you've got the dot on this side 
in the dot on this side. So you're going to stop at the dot, do a few stitches back and forth. So this lower part is going to be open. So you do that on all four seams. So when you're done, it looks like this. Okay? Alrighty, so this is what it looks like. It's just a great big old circle. Now go to your ironing board. Let me get my ironing board up here. Okay. And you're going to take the end that is where the seams are open at the end and insert that over your ironing board. You're now going to press these seams open with your iron. Then after you've pressed all four seams open, you're going to take the lower edge of each square, keep this folded over just like that, fold it in like this, okay? And you're going to press all the way across, making sure that these corners are folded in. Can you see that, Mr. Cameraman, I hope? Okay, so let me show it from this angle. They're folded in like this, okay? You're going to do that all the way around that lower edge. Let me get this ironing board out of the way. Now take the square for the bottom, and you're going to stitch it on. So let's look at this corner here. Here's the bottom square. You're basically just setting this on top, pushing these two corners in. You'll have a little bit of fabric exposed from the bottom piece of fabric. You're going to put your needle down right in here, right where the seam is open. Just put it right in there. Do a few stitches back and forth. And then you're going to stitch down this edge, 3 eighths of an inch seam. When you get to this next corner here, you're going to leave your needle down. Lift up your presser foot and turn and begin stitching down to the other corner. And do that all the way around all four sides. And when you're done, this is what it would look like on the bottom, okay? You can see that. And then, of course, this is what it looks like. So you've already got your cube started. It should already begin to look like a cube. Now take your lining, okay? You're going to create it just like you did the fabric for the outside, except there's no interfacing. So it's going to be kind of a flimsy cube. You do everything the same, all the same steps. Then you're going to turn your cube right side out. So just reach inside and begin to push it all out. Poke at your corners, okay? Get all those corners poked out. Straighten it all up. Now, you're gonna take your lining here and put it inside, okay? So you have the right side of the fabric facing away from the front side. So the, the uh, heavy iron-on interfacing is coming up against the back side of the lining fabric. Now, match your corners. Put pins at each corner to keep those seams together. Then you want to continue pinning along the edges up here. Then go to your sewing machine and you're going to do a stitch really close to the edge up here to hold all the pieces together so that when you go to put your binding on, you're not struggling trying to hold everything together. So then after you stitch all the way around all four sides, you're then ready to put the binding on. 
All right, now you want to take your two and a half inch wide strip. Now the length of your strip will depend on how big your basket is. So you want to measure the outside all the way around to see how long your strip needs to be. So cut it two inches wide, then at your ironing board, fold it in half, and then you're going to press it all the way down the strip. Then begin pinning it around the upper edge of your fabric cube. And when you bring, now the open raw edges go up here at the top. Now when you come around to bring the two ends together, overlap them and then cut the excess off. And you want to leave about a half inch overhang. Then open the two ends up. Let me see if I can get it open here and you're going to bring the front sides of the strips together. Sorry, I can't get, seem to get it open. Anyway, open both ends up, bring them together, and then stitch, oh, a little less than a half inch seam across there. Then finger press that seam open, fold it back in half, and finish pinning. And then you're going to stitch a quarter inch all the way around seam from this upper edge here. Then after you've done that, and then go around the other side, you're going to fold the binding over like I've done on the inside here. And you're going to pull the binding past the stitch line on the front so that it goes past that stitch line. Then after you've done, pin it all the way around, you're going to stitch in the ditch right along here. Let me turn this over right in there, real close to the edge of the binding. Not on the binding, but right next to it. And stitch it all the way around. And then you're done. So let's take a look at these baskets just one more time. Here's the finished one. Here's the one for fat quarters. And then of course, here is the larger one. These are a lot of fun to make and they're pretty fast to make too. You can do quite a few. This is a nice weekend project to help get your, your sewing corner all looking glamorous, okay? Now, to keep informed on all my future videos, click on one of my subscribe buttons. There's one down there in the lower right-hand corner. It's red, it says subscribe. And then in the upper left-hand corner is a round picture of my face. You can click on either one of those. Then YouTube's gonna prompt you for your email address. Enter that information and the next time I have a new video, YouTube sends you a brief email with a big picture or excuse me, a big button in the center. You click on it and it takes you directly to my latest video. I'm Cheryl and I'm really glad you came to my sewing room and I'm going to see you next time and happy sewing.